All right, guys, welcome to this Friday jam session. We are officially live. I think so anyway. So we're going to wait and see, make sure that Facebook lets a few of you know, and uh, we go ahead and see that it's actually working. Um, today, we are going to be talking about how to choose and rank content quickly inside of Google. Uh, so that's what we're going to be talking about here today. And really, like, what is the fastest way? A lot of people want to know, like, okay, how fast can you really rank content? And there's not really an exact answer to that, but I will tell you there are ways to get traffic faster, but a lot of that has to do with what you what you select as the uh, as the topic, and then from there, how you optimize it. There's other factors that go into it, and we will discuss those, but it really does depend on a lot of different factors. Although, and because I've done it, if you have a brand new site with no domain authority, anything like that, there are ways that you can get content ranking fairly quickly. Um, and we'll talk all about that stuff. So that's what we're going to be talking about on this Friday Jam session. If you guys have something that you want me to uh, answer, or if you want to elaborate on any part of this, let me know in the comments. Just drop it in the comments, and then we'll we'll go ahead and we'll open it up for some Q and A. Uh, but uh, we are going to be talking about that today. That is our jam session. And before we get into that topic today, let me give you what's going to uh, be discussed on our Monday mindset. I've already got that planned out, and that is winning the day. That's what it's all about: winning the day. How do we win each and every day? As we all know, every day is going to be a little bit different, but we can set ourselves up to win the day almost every day. And uh, we're going to talk about that because I think it's a good one to talk about beginning of the week because when we're starting the week, usually we need a little bit of a jump start. And uh, hopefully I'm going to give you that on Monday. So that'll be our Monday mindset. Make sure that you, that you uh, join me on that. Again, those Monday mindsets are usually between 10 and 15 minutes. We try to keep them really tight. So this way here, you guys can get the message, get yourself a, a little fired up for the week and then get on out there and make it happen. All right. So that's what we're going to be. Uh, that's what we're going to be doing on Monday mindset. Um, we are approaching here very soon too. And I actually just posted inside of uh, brand creators Academy. So if you're an Academy member and you, uh, you haven't, uh, been in the group yet, go in the group. I just posted a, uh, a thread there that I would like some help uh, because we are approaching the number 1,000 episode, okay? We are going to be hitting the 1,000th episode. That's a tough one, 1,000th, yeah, uh, episode. And uh, it's going to be airing on June 18th. So we have uh, we've got a little over two weeks. Um, and so I put a couple of suggestions in there. And I would love your thoughts on that. So uh, that one there will be a special one. That will be on a Friday. That's going to air on a Friday. So that'll probably um, not be a Friday jam session. Uh, although I'll, I will come on here as a jam session for the live. But the live will not be the um, the actual show. So that's coming up here pretty soon. Pretty exciting. Uh, man, oh man, I'll tell you what. I mean, we could do a whole episode on what it was like day one to you know everything that's happened since I uh, started the podcast. Like we're talking over five, almost six years now, I believe. I, I got to look and see the exact date, but it's just crazy. It feels like it just zipped by, uh, but so much has happened, so much. And, you know, we talk about entrepreneurship being a roller coaster. It is, it truly is. Uh, and man, oh man, if we just go back and talk about each and every up and down and dip and, uh, you know, ride along the way, uh, we could dig into that because I've learned a ton. Uh, just by doing this. And I've learned a lot about myself. I've learned a lot about business. I've learned a lot about people, uh, what I actually want, what I don't want a lot of that stuff. So heck that could be, that could be a, an episode all on its own. And who knows, maybe that should be the thousandth episode. Let me know. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions for that, I'd love to know it. Drop it in the comments, whether you're watching this live or on the replay. Um, that would be, uh, that would be cool to do that. So, uh, we're going to get rocking and rolling here. We got a few of you in the group here today, so that's awesome. Hey, Kay, good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while, Kay. Hopefully, all is well. Uh, Salama, yes, uh, thank you. 
Congratulations. Thank you. What's up, Alapandro? What's up? Uh, good morning, uh, Salma. Uh, happy Friday weekend plans. Yeah, two tournaments back to back Saturday and Sunday. But the cool thing is, is they're local. And my daughter and my son-in-law are here. My granddaughter's here. My son is here. So the whole the whole fleet is here this uh, this weekend and actually up until middle of next week. And then we're traveling and we're going to another volleyball tournament, which they're coming with us. So, um, yeah, pretty exciting stuff. Uh, and I, let's see here. Have you read the book Win the Day by Mark Batterson? I've just started reading it. I have not. I have not. Actually, I got the idea for winning the day from – uh, the book that I'm reading right now, Essentialism, no, not Essentialism, Effortless, which is by um, the author, what is his name now? Uh, Greg McCowan, McCowan, I think it is. Um, but he wrote uh, Essentialism, and then he wrote a book, Effortless. And in that, it talks a lot about winning the day or just winning uh, in general. So um, I wanted to dig into that because I thought it made a lot of sense. So, okay. So cool. So yes. Oh, diamond. What's up? How you doing? Good to see you. Uh, all right, cool. So yeah, we are going to get this going. We're going to wrap this up. And, uh, is Emmy K making an appearance? Not today. She's not here yet. Um, they're actually not staying with us. They're actually, and I don't know if I told you guys this, but they're, uh, they're RVing. They've got a fifth wheel and, uh, they are traveling. Let's see, they're here. Then they're going to New York, which we're going to follow them to New York. And then from there, they're going to go to Idaho for about six months. That's where, um, my son-in-law's parents are from family is from. Um, and that's where he was born and raised. So that's where they're going to spend some time. And then, uh, they're going to head back here in South Carolina for the, uh, fall into winter. Well, late fall into winter. Um, so anyway, so yeah, they're, um, they're here, but they're, uh, staying on a lake, lake, uh, uh let's see, Lake Wiley is the name of the lake and it's a campground up there. So they're, yeah, they're living out of the RV, which is uh, pretty awesome. And my son-in-law just uh, just, uh, I want to say retired, but not really retired. He retired from the Navy. Let's say that didn't retire as his 20 years, but he left the Navy after he had put in eight years. Um, and he didn't renew cause he wanted to do something else. So, um, yeah, pretty exciting stuff. And, uh, Emmy K is, uh, not going to make an appearance today, but maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe next week. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, so anyway, guys, let's, uh, let's get this going. So it is Friday. It is our jam session, our scheduled jam session, and we're here and uh, we are getting ready to uh, talk a little bit about, and I, I, again, I want this to be a back and forth. So if you guys have any questions on this, let me know. But really, I get this question a, a lot. It's like, Scott, what's the fastest way to rank content on Google? Like, What's the fastest way? Um, and that's what we're going to talk about. All right. So with that all being said, let's go ahead and officially kick this off. I'm going to go ahead and take a sip of coffee. And we are going to go. Here we go. All right, guys, welcome to this Friday jam session. And I am fired up because, well, well, a lot of different reasons. Number one, I'm hanging out with some cool people here live. And uh, if you guys are listening to this on the podcast, I usually do these Friday jam sessions with a live audience over on Facebook and YouTube. So if you want to be part of that, head on over to takeactioncrew.com. Again, that's Take Action Crew. And uh, we can hang out, have some coffee, and uh, we can jam a little bit. That's where we, uh, we jam on a certain topic. And today's topic is going to be how or what is the fastest way to rank content on Google? What's the fastest way? I get that question a lot. Scott, does it take a month? Does it take six months? Does it take a year? You know, what, what's realistic? I'm going to talk all about that because there's a lot of variables, a lot of variables. I'm going to walk you through what I would do and what I continue to do on a regular basis. And to me, it's a lot easier and faster to rank this type of content as long as we have checked all the boxes. All right. So we'll give you those boxes to check here. Uh, but depending on if you have a website that already has some type of authority, and if you're new to the building content or creating content and posting it on a website, if you're new to like domain authority, I want you to think of domain authority like Google is is looking at you as a a a really good resource, okay? And you've proven yourself because 
There's a lot of factors that go into domain authority, but number one is age. How old is your website? How old is your domain name? Okay. Those things go into play, come into play. Uh, the other thing is, do you have backlinks coming into your website? Now, backlinks are if, uh, if I post something and someone finds it useful, they will link from a website. Now, there are ways to manufacture these backlinks. I am not a fan of that. And recently, if you listen to the podcast episode where I talked about I was looking at a website to buy for about $40,000, I decided not to buy it. And one of the biggest reasons was because it had manufactured backlinks, what they call a private blog network. I don't like that because Google can slap that. And if Google slaps it and dings it, then I lose all that traffic instantly. So I decided to uh, basically... Uh, create my own website, not necessarily just in that niche. I'm going to actually use about three or four different niches. I'm going to start with two, but they're going to be under this one umbrella. And I'm going to be sharing this inside of Brand Creators Academy, by the way. So if you're an Academy member, stay tuned for that because I'm going to be sharing um, that website. And um, the domain authority that I have with this certain brand, uh, because it's around four or five years old, and I might not have elaborated on that. So let me elaborate on that. I have a website that I haven't really used much, but it's about five years old. And so I'm going to take that because it has some domain authority, it has some backlinks, and I am going to use that as my website because it does go in line with this new niche. Okay. So throwing that out there, domain authority. Okay. If you do not have domain authority, which there's two sites right now that I started building around 18 months ago, almost two years now, and they had zero. They were brand new, bought the domain names on GoDaddy, put up our WordPress blog, created our, uh, you know, our WordPress uh, theme and plugins, and we added everything and we documented everything inside of the academy and everything started with zero. Well, right now we have probably a thousand or more backlinks. Our domain authority on each of those is between a 15 and a 19, which is good by the way, because zero is, is nothing right. But it started with zero and I was still able to start ranking content within two to three months because I was going after long tail keywords. Now I'm going to share with you what you should be looking at. Okay. And when you start, you shouldn't be focusing on just the numbers. You need to start building credibility. You need to start building a base, a foundation of content to also let Google know what your site is about. So a lot of people, they'll just look at keywords and they're like, I want to do that keyword bass fishing because it gets, you know, whatever, 15,000 searches a month. I would love that. It's bass fishing. A better way of doing that is answering specific questions or teaching how to or product reviews. Those are those three buckets I talk a lot about. And actually, I haven't talked about this in a while. If you are just getting started or you want to really build out your content on your website, your home base, as I call it, I would go check out brandcreatorsbook.com, brandcreatorsbook.com. That book will give you all the pillars, all of the steps to do exactly what we've done. Uh, now, to give you a little bit of uh, where we're at now is each of those sites are getting, well, the one is getting just under 50,000 visits per month. The other one is, uh, it, it hit 70,000. Right now we're about 68,000 last 30 days. Okay. And now we're able to turn on ad networks and do all that good stuff. But how did we get there? How did we get there? How did we get content that was able to rank? It's very, very simple. People complicate this part of it. You need to go after very, 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 let me give it one more very, very specific questions. All right. I'm actually doing a YouTube video. I'm actually prepping for it right now. And I'm going to be airing it probably next week where I show you long tail, how to find that long tail. And I found one. It was, can you catch bass in a pond? And then the other one was, uh, where to catch Peacock bass, peacock bass. I've never heard of peacock bass. I've heard of largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, but I didn't know there's a peacock bass, but there is. And that's a great specific one. There was also another one that was a little bit longer than that. That was uh, where to catch or no. Uh, yeah. Where to catch peacock bass in 
Southern Florida. Like that's long tail. Okay. And I think it gets like maybe 200 searches a month, but people would be like, uh, 200 searches per month. Why would I do that? It's only 200 searches. Well, create 10 of those posts. Then what do we got? We got 2000 people a month. Then let's say we add another 10. Then we got what? 20,000 or no 4,000, right? So you see how that happens. And here's the thing that will happen. Some of those long tail, they'll turn into where they're getting a hundred a day. There's one right now that we created that is very similar to that. Like, you know, a very specific question. We posted it over nine months ago, nine months ago. And that post was getting maybe, I don't know, after a month, it might've been getting 10, 10 people a day. So what's that? You know, that was like 300, you know, so it was doing pretty good, but it wasn't crushing it. Now we're getting hundred a day just from that one, but there's still other ones that we created that are getting five visits a day, right? So the thing here that you want to do in the very beginning, or even if you're just adding content, cause we're still doing this, I'm still answering specific questions. And so what we're doing is we're always trying to look at the specific questions. What are those specific questions we can answer, right? The one site that I was looking at purchasing that we're going to be basically building out something in the similar niche is that we're going at it at a different approach. We're going after questions, products, questions, products. That site really only did a lot of product review stuff. Well, Google has announced somewhere, I don't know exactly where, but I've been hearing that they're going to start dinging, they're going to start slapping websites that are just product reviews because they know that people are just creating websites for product reviews to sell affiliate products. It's been happening for years. So what they're going to do is they're going to do a, a kind of like a ratio look and they're going to say, okay, this site is only product reviews. I don't think I want to give it as much weight. So they'll put, they'll, they'll push you down in the rankings. Now, a site that has question-based posts, how-to type posts and product-based posts going to do better because it's diversification again, right? It's, it's got a mix. It's not just helping someone that's buying a product. It's helping someone that's also looking to get answers to those questions. So that's how we're building out our, our sites. We're doing questions, we're doing how to's and we're doing products. Very, very simple. Um, so this new project that we're going to be undertaking here, which is about ready to kick off, we're going to probably start posting content, fresh content, probably next week. Um, and we're going to do two posts per week. And each of those posts, one post is going to be a question answer. Okay. And the other one is going to be a product review. And we're going to, we're going to do that for probably three months straight. And then we're going to look at the data. Okay. And so how do you do it? How, how do you create or what type of content do you create? That's going to rank the fastest. Cause that's what we all want to know, right? What's the fastest way to rank content? Well, step number one is getting very specific and choosing the long tail keywords. And for me, in the very beginning, I would make a bucket of your questions to answer, and I would start writing content on that. And I wouldn't even really care so much about the numbers. Now, if you want to go into Uber Suggest and go, oh, this one gets 50 searches a month, this one gets 200 searches a month, okay, but don't get hung up on that. And so all I would do is I would create those posts, I would set myself up a schedule, and I would go ahead and start posting. So number one, find the specific long tail keywords. Step number two is write the darn article. <laughs> okay. We can't rank if we don't. So the fastest way is to actually post something. Okay. So that's two. Now the third thing is, is optimization. And I'm not going to go into all of the ins and outs of the optimization, but if you use a plugin, they, there's a bunch of them out there, but Yoast is one that we've used in the past. If you use Yoast, it's going to get you about 80% of the way there. It's going to give you the, the, the most basic form of SEO and the things that make up a well-optimized post. But some of the, the basic things are, is you want your title obviously to answer that specific question or to be that search phrase that you're going for. Okay. The next thing is, is your subheads. Your subheads are also known as your H2 tags. Now your, your headline or your, your uh, title 
is your H1. That's the main one that gets the most uh, weight kind of in a sense. And then the subheads, they also help because now you can get searched for one of those subheads. If you have a subhead in there that is, uh, well, so if we're going after you're like how to catch bass in a pond, the next one in there might be like how to catch bass in or at night. And so, you know, that if you're fishing in a pond, there's probably going to be a question about, about, uh, fishing at night and it goes together, but you might get found for how to catch or, uh, yeah, how to catch bass at night because it's in your subhead. And it, that article is all about how to catch bass, right? So we want to have those subheads be really, really in line and support the main title. But again, easiest way to do this. And I've shared this before is do your search inside of Google. And then Google will say people also search for, and then it'll give you four or five more questions. Put those in your blog post. That is your content. And then just fill in the blanks. So write that article, post it, make sure that you have a good thumbnail image. The thumbnail image should have a, uh, have your keyword as the name. So if it's how to catch peacock bass, it should be your picture should be how to catch peacock bass or where to catch peacock bass. And then that way there you can be found in a Google search for images or even just supporting images for that post. Um, so that would be that. And then you also want to link out of the post, not just in the post. So what I mean by that is if there is a really well authoritative site like bassonline.com might be one of those you probably want to link over to that site as a reference saying, you know, something along the lines of, you know, one great resource that I've found that helps me with locations to catch bass is bassonline.com. Um, they have great resources, whatever. So you just make a light mention of it. You link over to it. Google likes that. And then the other one is internal linking. So if you have other supporting articles on your website, then you want to link to those if it makes sense. So if you have a post on where to catch peacock bass, but you have another post on how to catch bass in a pond, you might mention how to catch or where to catch bass in a pond or how to catch bass in a pond and link over to that one is if it makes sense. Google also likes interlinking and it keeps people on your site longer because they're going to now be able to navigate different parts of your site. When you increase the time, the average time on your site, that gives Google another signal that your site is, is a, a good resource because people are spending more time there. So that's the easiest way to do it guys. And the fastest way to do it. If you go after long tail keywords, there's a chance that you could rank depending on your market and your niche and depending on your, your domain score and all of that stuff, but you could rank as little as two, three weeks. I've seen it happen. We actually had one on, uh, as we did for our content creation, seven day challenge, and we created a random post. The thing ranked in nine days. Okay. Now, is it getting floods of traffic? No, you know, I, I haven't looked at it as far as lately, but it's, who knows, maybe it's getting two visitors a day. I don't know, but it took Chris like an hour to write the post. It it's on the site. It gives another resource and it's something that Google is looking at like another piece of content that supports our website because that's what our website talks about. So that's what Google is looking at. They're looking at the resource that you're creating. Okay. And so the fastest way to rank content Number one is to post content <laughs> like that's number one. Uh, and then from there picking, making sure that you're choosing the keywords that are low competition. Okay. And that's usually the long tail might not get a ton of searches, um, but that's going to be the fastest way to rank. And even if you rank, but it doesn't get a ton of traffic, you're now still indexing content in Google and Google now is aware of you. So my recommendation is get out of your own way. Choose very specific question-based type posts in the beginning, or even if you're constantly adding content, you always want to have a mix of those questions. And then from there, optimize your content using a tool like Yoast, or just go through the basics as I just shared with you. And that's it. And then hit publish and then just walk away. Realistically, we're always saying three to six months before we are going to plan on even 
looking at our statistics, looking at our numbers. And it's hard in the beginning because, right, you got like five posts that you just posted. And then two weeks later, you go back and go, did I get any traffic? And the chances are you probably didn't yet because maybe it's just getting indexed and it's just starting to show up. So it's really not a lot of time. All right. Now, one thing that I would do, okay, if you're creating content and you do have an email list, I would send your email list that blog post that can increase the amount of time that it takes to rank. And here's why, because now those people can share it and who knows, it could get a backlink from, from another site. They could share it in a, in a community. They could share it, uh, in, in a Facebook group. They could share it in a forum. And then from there, guess what? You're going to get a backlink. Or you're going to just get visitors there. And then Google sees that you had some traffic there, right? So when you send your own traffic, your email list there, it can speed up that process. And you start to get people seeing your content and not just waiting for Google. So definitely make sure that you're building that email list and you're sending weekly emails to your list. And usually you're going to send them to your blog post that you just wrote. All right. If you need help building your email list, I would definitely encourage you to check out email list building fast track workshop. And you can go there to the website or the domain name of ours is uh, email list class.com. Again, that's email list class.com. And uh, you will be able to access that on demand training. It's about two and a half hours and it will walk you exactly through how to start building that list and then start sending emails. All right. So, with that all being said, thank you guys for stopping by. Now what we're going to do is we are going to answer some questions. So if you're listening to this on the podcast, we're going to do these live questions right now uh, for a few minutes. And if you want to ask one of your questions, drop them in the comments. If you're here live, if you're not here live and listening to it on the podcast, then go ahead and show up on Fridays because that's where we do our jam session. All right. So let's go ahead and see what we got here. All right. So uh, let's see. Oh. We have uh, someone in here from Germany, Serdel. Uh, okay, here we go. How long would you write question posts twice a week or would you write one product post from the beginning? Uh, what about how to post? When do you start those and how often initially? So here's the formula. And this is the one that we're following right now, okay? To a T on a brand new project, okay? Starting pretty much from scratch. We're gonna post two articles per week. One of them is a question post, question answer, and then the other one is a product based. Okay. That's it. That's the formula. If you do that for three months straight, then you can come back and go, okay, do I want to now do some how to post? Do I want, because the thing is, is depending on the how to, the how to could take longer to actually create. So what I want to do at this point is I want to make it easy, right? We want to make it where we can do this and show up every single week. Okay. And be able to post these. Now in the beginning on two of the other sites that we were building, uh, one of them, I was posting four per week, uh, actually on each of those for a little while, but then now we backed off and now we're doing two. Okay. Two a week. So right now I've got those two sites, which have over 200 articles each. And then, uh, the new one that we have right now, is pretty much starting from scratch. And we're going to start that by adding one question-based post and one product-based post. And then what we might do is we might say one month, we might go, you know what? We're going to go ahead and backfill a lot of these questions. And so maybe what I'll do is I'll, as long as my writer can handle it, maybe I'll say for maybe four weeks, I'll do four articles per week, two and two. But right now, if you're just starting, we want at least one, that would be a question-based post. And then maybe you alternate, you go the next week with a product-based post. But I would say, if you can, I would do two a week product based question based and then just keep keep that going keep that going all right uh let's see alpandro uh i usually pick seo difficulty from 2 to 12 thoughts um so i think you're talking about in uber suggest and yeah i think that's fine although you know you can look at those metrics as as like 2 through 12 and yes it should be easier but not always uh, so I like to look at what is the, what are the sites that are, that are ranking well and seeing if they have the exact match for their page that they're ranking for or their post. And then just looking at their domain authority and things like that, because 
even though you have a low score, um, doesn't mean that those sites are going to be easy or those those uh, posts are going to be easy to rank for. So I, I do, do a little bit uh, of a deeper dive there. Not too much, but just a little bit. Um, but I think that's a good rule of thumb. Anything under like 15, pretty easy. It should be. Uh, and I say easy. Does that mean you're going to rank in three weeks? No, it just means that you'll eventually rank and possibly get position number one. And that's what we're looking at, right? Uh, let's see. Tips for ranking YouTube videos for beginner. Uh, you know, <laughs> that's still a nut I'm trying to crack anyway. Um, and to me, it does come down to consistency. Like you have to keep posting. And really the same rules apply though. You want long tail, right? Might not get a ton of searches, might not get a ton of views, but it starts to build up that momentum. So I would say using the same principles other than when you're creating your description, you're not going to put in a full blog post, although you could. Um, but yeah, it's the same principle and you're tagging. You want to put all the tags in there that make sense. But honestly, I don't know of a, of a formula that is, that is, uh, just, it's going to work no matter what. Um, YouTube's a little bit of a, of a tougher animal, um, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, what are some examples of types of product posts reviews? Uh, yes, that's what it's going to be. Five best bass fishing lures, 2021, uh, you know, uh, nine, uh, best types of yarn for knitting, like something like that. And then you're just going to do a product review post. That's what that would look like. Um, this one here, I don't know who it is because it doesn't say the name, but thank you for stopping by. Um, hey, Scott, loving this live, super informative. Tell me more about the question post. Is that the title of the post? How do you structure the H2s to respond to that question? Thanks. Uh, well, that's a little bit more of an in-depth question, but at the basic level is if I am writing a post on how to catch more bass in a pond, uh, then I want that to be the title, right? Or if it's, can you catch bass in a pond or can you catch bass on or using worms, right? That would be the exact post. And then inside of that post, you're going to use subheads. And those subheads, an easy little hack for that would be go to Google, put in your exact keyword that you're going to be titling it, and then see what the um, suggested questions are and use those as your subheads. And that would be a, a nice, easy way of doing that. And those would be your H2s. Uh, let's see. Images and videos are always good to add to the blog. How do they help? Well, they they are, they're better user experience. So a lot of people don't look at the user experience as being a factor when ranking it is. So if we keep people longer on your page, so if you have a, a if you have a, a YouTube video that's embedded, well, then that video is going to keep them there longer because they're watching it because it's on your website, right? So if they sit there for four minutes watching a video that shows that they're sitting on your page for four minutes, that's a, that's an indicator to Google that it's content that people are consuming and staying for. Um, so a lot of people don't look at that. Um, so yes, I would say you do want to add videos and images, just give it a better user experience as far as they can visually see stuff. It's not just all text. Uh, do posts get outdated? How do you prevent that? They can get updated. Uh, I know with Yoast, there's a, I think it's Yoast. You can set it up that it parameters that every single year it will update the year on that post. So it'll say, uh, nine best bass fishing lures. 2021, 2022, 2023, and it'll just keep updating. What I don't like about that, unless you're going to go back every year and update that, like you might have four or five posts that every year you're going to update. That's fine. Um, but yes, that would be a problem if you are not updating those posts. So if you have something that's time sensitive or something that is outdated as far as electronics, which that would happen, but I don't see fishing lures going really outdated. Um, you know, yarn, you know what I mean? Like things like that. You kind of use your own head on that. Um, but I would say, yes, you might want to go back and, um, and update some of that stuff if you need to. Uh, do you have how to post on your model sites? Uh, chicken, I can't get my head around how to illustrate without using video. Uh, yeah. So on the how to, if you did video, you could do screenshots of it. We don't have a ton of how to, to be honest with you. Um, and if it is a how to, it doesn't need a lot of explanation. It just would give step one, do this step two, do this. And you might have a couple of images to demonstrate that. Uh, but video would be great for that. Uh, Aldo, 
if I created content that is shorter, better version of other articles, videos, would that be okay? Should I include references to them? Example, link to videos. Yes, it doesn't hurt to do that, to link over to the resource that you're getting and, and the, you know, the, um, the different sources that you're pulling from. Um, so I think that's fine. Or if you elaborate on it, but the thing is, is if you're competing against 10 different uh, articles and all of them are a certain length, they all are really well optimized and you come in with a shorter article, you're probably not going to outrank them. Okay. Because they just have more information. It's not that it's longer. It's just more information. Um, so I wouldn't look at it as far as like, it needs to be a certain length just because they look at word count. No, they look at information. So the more in depth, the article is the more that it will also be, um, for various people looking for that, you know, that question or how to, uh, let's see. Jay, uh, great content, Scott. So after we get the keywords from Uber suggest, do we use Google and YouTube for the long tail? Could you provide an example? Um, I can on another, on another, um, video or another live, I could do that. Um, uh, but just to kind of riff on this, if you will, this is a jam session. Um, yeah, I would, if you take the keyword from Uber suggest and go into Google, you can then get other ideas. But actually when you're in Uber suggest, that's going to give you more than enough ideas. And it's going to allow you to see very quickly the top 10, right. That are ranking. Um, and then you can look at what they're ranking for and how they're ranking and the content type and the style. Um, but if you're, again, if you're on YouTube, then you're going to want to go to YouTube, do a keyword search for that, and then see what videos are coming up and then kind of look at those as proof. And also, um, what kind of views they have, uh, how their subscriber counts are things like that. Uh, let's see Salama best way to share affiliate links. Uh, well, I think if you're talking about blog content, it's like putting it, put them in the blog content. If you're sending email, send them to your blog content and then your affiliate links will be in there. Um, should a blog post have a call to action, a CTA? Um, it, it could, but again, if your blog post is just a question-based post, it might not have a, a call to action in there to go buy something. But as you're talking about a question, a lot of times you're weaving in products or recommendations, um, because that will help them with answering that question, right? Like you might say something like, you know, can you catch fish or can you catch bass in a pond? And in that post to be like one of the, uh, you know, one of the best ways to catch bass in a pond is by using this type of bait, right? Or th this type of lure. Uh, and then as you say lure, you might link over to a post that talks about bass fishing lures right? So it's just automatic, or you might link over to, you know, the, the five best, uh, you know, fishing lures on Amazon and that might link over there. So there is a little bit of, uh, a little bit of thought that would need to go into that, but again, don't overthink it and don't stuff in affiliate links or call it to action just to stuff them in there. It needs to make sense. All right. So guys, I think that just about answers the questions. And also I think we're out of time. So Thank you so much for stopping by. This was an awesome jam session. I think you guys really, really do enjoy the uh, creating content, getting it ranked, getting some free traffic, building out your websites, building out your brands. And I would definitely encourage you that if you are not here live and if you're listening to this on the podcast, well, head on over to takeactioncrew.com and there's uh, some free resources there for you of some past coffee talks. And then you can also join us on an upcoming coffee talk and become officially part of our morning crew. All right, guys. So that is it. That is going to wrap up this Friday jam session. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in. Take care, take action, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye guys.